We look forward to the time when there is no to all of you. I just want to welcome you to this week's uh, Torah uh, portion. We're actually going to do a little offshoot of our, what we normally do for the uh, this week's Torah portion. We're going to actually do it in two parts. And so this is going to be part one of the Torah portion for this week, which is the Parashat Vayera. So my name is Rabbi uh, Harel Clint Fry. And this week's parasha, kind of, we're going to talk about a basic uh, theological conundrum about why did God uh, harden Pharaoh's heart? So we all know. Uh, <clears throat> so here we're talking about where Moses is getting ready to go with Aaron. He's going before the Pharaoh uh, just to do a recap, and he's saying, "Let my people go, so we can go into the desert and worship our God." Obviously, to get them out of there and save them from their slavery. And so, obviously, as many know, Pharaoh's heart is hardened by God, and then we have the ten plagues. So, we'll get more into why did God harden Pharaoh's heart this week. And we know that the Pharaoh gets hit with a plague, and then he agrees to let the Jews go, but then he retracts his agreement. And when he retracts his agreement, he's hardening his heart. And so, and the Torah begins in the first few plagues with the Pharaoh changing his mind every time, but then he transitions to a place where it seems that God changes Pharaoh's mind for him. Of course, the theological conundrum is what happened to Pharaoh's free will, okay? Because the Lord says, hey, we all have a free will to decide for ourselves, but isn't there a time sometimes when God might be hardening people's hearts in order to show his glory? So. We're going to go further into that. And it's a fundamental principle of Jewish thought that God does not deprive humans of free will. So uh, we can highlight this, an approach taken by a rabbi named Sforno, who is an Italian rabbi uh, a long time ago, and elaborate, elaborate on the implications of that approach together. So did God take away Pharaoh's free will by hardening his heart? Uh, Rabbi Sforno argues that, in fact, <clears throat> God never did deprive Pharaoh of his free will, but if anything, he enhanced uh, the Pharaoh's um, free will. And how could this be? How could God harden Pharaoh's heart as a way of enhancing his free will? So let's get a little more into that and figure it out. It turns out that the Torah uses two different words to describe the changing of Pharaoh's mind. Kibud Halev and Hitzuk Halev. And how are these translated? What two different processes are happening here? And what do these words mean? The meaning of the hardening of Pharaoh's heart. Kabed means to harden, to become heavy, the hard heart. Chazak, of course, means strong. So Hitzuk Halev would mean to strengthen or strengthen the heart. And here we can notice immediately that one has a positive connotation, one has a negative connotation. Nobody wants to have a hard heart or a heavy heart, or everyone would want to have 
a strong heart, though. So how did God harden Pharaoh's heart? If we could translate the meaning of these words, you might say that kibud halev, hardened, hardness of heart, actually means to be stubborn. Okay, so we could say many of us have had a kibud halev at one time in our lives, at least, if not more. And um, whereas a hitzuk, a hitzuk halev, strengthening of a heart, or strength of heart, is something we might describe as a courage. All right, so. One of the things you need to look at, and we're going to look at it as we go through the plagues, is which word is being used in any given plague. <clears throat> right, we're going to find out. Is it the hardening or the strengthening? So when Pharaoh changes his mind, is he exhibiting a kind of hitsu kalev, or a kind of courage, or is he exhibiting a kind of uh, kibud halev, a stubbornness, hardness? Now, of course, in any given plague, not only do you get the differences between the word Kibud Halev and Hitzuk Halev. You also get the difference between who is doing the changing of the mind. Is it God or is it the Pharaoh? Is Pharaoh changing or is God changing? All right. So did Pharaoh harden his own heart or did God? So we can set this kind of as a matrix. As a matrix, in any given plague, there is one of four possibilities. So on the y on the y side on the y axis, we can list actors is god the one doing this or is pharaoh uh the one doing it and on the x side uh going across we might ask what is being done what are we talking about uh we're we talking about kibud halev on the one hand or are we talking about hitsu halev <clears throat> and so we can kind of put a checkbox in the square that applies for each plague so we can encourage you to take some time and actually go through this parasha on your own. Um, and for each one of these plagues, you can try to check off uh, which of these four quadrants you might think is uh, possible or applicable in this situation. If it is Bechabed Pharaoh, okay, so it means that Pharaoh is the actor. It means that he is doing, what he is doing is making himself stubborn. So, and then we can do that for each of the plagues and the conclusions, and we'll find this very interesting. All right, so if you uh, <clears throat> would like, we can check out the conclusions together. I encourage you to check out, um, uh, to check out uh, this yourself. So what does it mean to be chosen? You can find it in our holiday section on our website. And as I go through the, each of these plagues in detail and try to show exactly what I think is happening in each one. In the meantime, we can just go to the essence of Rabbi Sporno's idea. <clears throat> did God take Pharaoh's free will or did he enhance it? So if we take Rabbi Sporno's idea that Pharaoh's free will is actually being enhanced, the way that we will actually get there is that God never actually makes Pharaoh stubborn. The only thing that God would ever do is to lend Pharaoh more courage to continue the fight maybe, okay? So if I give you courage to pursue your vision, I am enhancing your free will. If you actually look carefully <clears throat> throughout the entire parasha, you will never ever find God a machbid Pharaoh's heart. God will never actually himself harden Pharaoh's heart. Okay. So the only thing he will do is that he will matzik Pharaoh's heart. And um, what that seems to mean is that there is a moment where Pharaoh's courage would fail him, but then God gives him the courage back to be able to continue to pursue his vision, to say, uh-uh, no, I'm not doing this. So what is that vision? Uh, ironically, that vision is defiance of God. <laughs> and there's a reason why God wants Pharaoh to defy him. Why did God keep hardening Pharaoh's heart? So we can think of it this way. God gives the courage to be able to defy him. God, had God not lent Pharaoh courage at that moment, Pharaoh would not have would have given in, basically. Not because he would have relinquished his vision of wanting to defy God, but not because he would have changed his theological mindset, but simply because he failed. He had a lack of courage. He wasn't strong enough to continue. All right, God says, no, I'm going to give you the strength to continue. Kind of seems strange, but we'll see why. I don't want you to give in to me out of lack of strength. 
I want you to give in to me because you change your vision. I don't want you to be beaten into submission. I want you to change your agenda. Okay. <clears throat> so the 10 plagues were kind of education, an education of what it means for there to be one God in this world. The one God is not looking to beat even his enemies into submission. Okay. We have to remember the Egyptians had 10 different gods, hence 10 different plagues. So the hope of the 10 plagues is that it's a kind of education process, first for Egypt, Egypt, but through Egypt uh, for the entire world. So he's using Egypt to teach out throughout history, hey, I am the only God. Okay. <clears throat> so you ever wonder why there needed to be 10 plagues? Like I said, why 10 plagues? You couldn't have gotten the Jews to go free a lot easier than that. All the power of the universe is at your disposal, and it's going to take you 10 plagues to get the Jews free. God doesn't really need to do that. However, like I said, there's a reason. And then just freeze the Egyptians in place. Let's load the Jews into a magic carpet and take them out of the land of it to the land of Israel, for example. All right, he can do that. Uh, so, and if you look at different prophets of the Bible, there was a time when the Holy Spirit would actually move them from one place to another without them even moving their legs. So uh there is another agenda to the 10 plagues an educational agenda control over all aspects of nature who would have that well in a polytheistic or a world world or a, a world where there are many gods a world governed by many many different gods no one god holds the key to all these forces that only exists if there is a creator god one god one force in charge of it all so gradually, the 10 plagues reveal this to be true. All right, Pharaoh and Egypt need to see that. <clears throat> All right, so what if they give in for the wrong reasons, okay? What if the plagues are simply too powerful to withstand uh, the first? So I encourage you to also realize, until you realize the truth, that's what he's saying. This God that you are battling is not just a powerful, uh, polytheistic God. He's the one God. He's the creator. <clears throat> when you realize that, when you change your vision, then the battle is over. So how many times did God need to harden Pharaoh's heart? Like I said, it turns out that there is a point where Pharaoh actually gets the truth. He gets it. He understands it. And strangely, it's not after the 10th plague. It's after the seventh one, after Barad. Okay. In Barad, there's perhaps the greatest display of God's oneness that could possibly exist. Hail rains down on Egypt, on Egypt. But the hail is a very special kind of hail. It's fire and ice together. And this is going to happen again in the future, people. It's going to happen again in the book of Revelation in the end times. It's fire encapsulated within the ice. <laughs> That's kind of incredible, but true. If it was a regular hail, you could say the ice God doesn't like Egypt. She's angry or he's angry. If fire was raining down from heaven, you could say that the sun god, the fire god, doesn't like Egypt, which is an alliance between the fire god <clears throat> and ice god. All right, so having the two together, it's, are they in agreement now? No, they don't get along. Okay, only the creator can make peace between fire and ice. So in the wake of the plague of hail, Pharaoh's response is Hashim ha. God is the righteous one. Me and my people have been wicked. He finally admits. So God hardened Pharaoh's heart for his glory only. And until now, Pharaoh had never talked about the conflict between him and God in these terms. There's no sense that you are in the right and I am in the wrong. Morality only comes into picture when you are defying the creator. It's not right to defy your creator, okay? So Pharaoh gets it in the seventh plague. Plague leading right up to that, Pharaoh had also given in. He had been crushed by the plague of uh, the Shechin, his astrologers who he had counted on for advice. They couldn't even stand the plague of boils and it affected even them very greatly. So the last plague uh, by, uh, God gave Pharaoh the strength to continue, the strength to pursue his vision 
so that he could not, so that he, he could fight on. An interesting thing is that that's not the end of the plagues, of course. The plagues continue. And why isn't it over then? Why isn't it over at the seventh plague? Should, should be over, right? But it, it's done. But Pharaoh recognized the truth finally, and he let the Jews go, or he wanted to. So why are there three more plagues? We will talk about that when we come back next week. So thank you for joining us this week. Shabbat Shalom. And we will see you in part two of today's Torah portion. Now for the Aaronic blessing. Adesso la benedizione di Aaroni. Yevarechecha Adonai veishmarecha. Yair Adonai panavalecha veichunecha. Yesa Adonai panavalecha veyesem lecha shalom. Veshem Yeshua HaMashiach. Sar shalom shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Shalom. Che il Signore vi benedica e vi protegga. Il Signore faccia risplendere il suo volto su di voi e vi sia propizio. Che il Signore elevi il suo volto su di voi e vi dia la pace. In nome di Yeshua, Gesù, il Messia, il Principe della Pace. Shalom. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.